guys, it's your girl, Ashley Kirkwood with the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, where we teach you how to start at the top of the speaking market instead of working your way up from the bottom. During this show, you will hear solo episodes from me, where I'll show you how I have landed and negotiated five and six figure speaking contracts and licensing deals. You'll also hear from our amazing guests who have grown enormous speaking businesses by utilizing sales and marketing principles that work. If you want to grow your speaking business, listen to this podcast. And then afterwards, head on over to ashleynicolekirkwood.shop and grab my book, Speak Your Way to Cash, How to Start at the Top of the Speaking Market Instead of Working Your Way Up from the Bottom. Ready to dive in? Let's go. Hey, y'all. What's up to the Speak Your Way to Cash family? It's Ashley Kirkwood back again with another podcast episode. But this time, guys, I am actually going to let you listen in to a live video that I recorded. Now, if you're listening to this live video on the podcast and you're like, oh, I want to join your next live. I want to ask you questions. I want to be able to get feedback about my business. Then you have to follow me on Instagram at The Ashley Nicole Show and make sure you're following the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook page. All right. Make sure you're following the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook page because that's where I go live. I also sometimes go live in the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group, but enough about that. Even though you may have missed it live, you're about to hear it again. So listen into this live episode and let me know what you think. You can always send me an email to Ashley at speakyourwaytocash.com. Let's listen in. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello, hello. We are here. My name is Ashley Nicole Kirkwood. I'm the founder of Speak Your Way to Cash. I'm also uh, an IP attorney, if you all don't know. So I run the Speak Your Way to Cash company alongside my husband, where we help speakers, entrepreneurs, authors, leaders in general, land corporate and collegiate speaking contracts, and learn how to sell more services utilizing the art of speaking and timeless sales strategies that work, okay? But here's the thing, y'all. I, I felt compelled, okay, compelled by life circumstances to do this pop-up live on what you need to have in place when selling to corporate. And let me tell y'all why I need to do this live. Because we talk a lot about the glamorous side of dealing with corporations, the fun side, the pretty side, the land, the contract and get paid side. But there is a dark side to this. Okay. So this is like the warning episode. Now, before we get into that, I'm going to give you three things you need to have in place, maybe more. It depends on how, how, how I'm led, <laughs> but three things you need to have in place when selling to corporate. And here's the other thing. The things that we're going to discuss are things that you may want, you need to have in place when selling services to anyone, okay? Because one thing I know as an attorney, as someone who has seen all manner of things, we get so excited about the sales side, the money side of the business that we totally neglect the operational side, which includes legal, that can protect you in the event that things go south or that can aid in your protection in the event that things go south. Now, we getting into some fire tonight. Get your pens, get your paper. It's going to be good. But also, news flash alert. If you have not registered for the Pitch Your Way to Cash Challenge, you should be registered. We kick off on Monday. And if you registered and you don't have a Platinum All Access Pass, then you need to be, what are you doing? What are we doing with our lives? Get the Platinum All Access Pass to the Pitch Your Way to Cash Challenge because that pass will give you access to a Platinum Q&A, access to my most profitable pitches, bonus trainings, and so so much more. There's really no other way to do the challenge. Get your all access pass. Okay. Don't get caught up in the free ticket zone. Get the platinum all access pass and let's get into it. Okay. But if you all don't know, I'd also like to formally introduce you to Mrs. Vibe. This is my vibe board. I just got her. So I'm going to be using her today. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to talk about what to have when selling the corporate. A lot of people ask me, hey, Ashley, how do I land a corporate contract? And I can tell them that because pitching is a critical piece of that, right? So you get it by pitching, by networking through referrals. But what do you do once you have that contract in place or even beforehand? Are you prepared to do business with large organizations. Are you prepared to do business, period? Okay, there's a couple things that we're going to go over that you need to have. Okay, number one, and let me make sure I do this right so y'all can see it. Okay. Okay. So number one is contracts. Number one is contracts. You want to make sure that you have contracts in place, contracts in place. And hold on one second, y'all. Okay. So you want to make sure that you have contracts in place. You want to have your contracts in place, have your contracts in order. That's really important. That's really important. Let me tell you why. One, sometimes people don't pay. Big clients don't pay. Small clients don't pay. All clients, eight, no client is like absolved 
from the threat of non-payment. You need to have contracts in place, okay? You absolutely need to have contracts in place. If money is exchanging hands, you want to have contracts or terms in place. What do the terms mean? If you're sending out invoices, I don't recommend this, but let's say you got to, you know, you're like, Ashley, I can get a whole contract with a lawyer. I'm not there yet. What can I do? Terms. At, at bare minimum, your invoice should have terms on it. Your website should have terms on it. You should have little disclaimers and things that people are checking when they check out with you. And let me tell y'all something else. Tell us something else. Do not think that you are too small to play big. Can we go there for a second? Like, don't think that you are too small of a business to play big. One of the most boss things our business did recently was hired our own in-house counsel. Like, literally, you were like, nope. We're not like, I'm not hiring a law firm. Like we have an in-house counsel who works for Speak Your Way to Cash day in, day out. Someone who can protect our best interests, who can advise us every step of the way, who can make sure that we're protected. Yes, I'm a lawyer. Yes, I could do it myself. But my number one priority to my business is to generate revenue. I am the chief revenue officer at Speak Your Way to Cash. So I wanted to make sure I had someone on the operation side whose core obligation was to make sure that we're protected, who could literally handle my lightweight. Okay. So do not think that you are too small to play big. If you want to get in this game, if you want to sell to corporations, absolutely. But do not let them punk you, period, out of the obligations that you have to your company to protect it. Don't think that your business is too small to have contracts in place. It's not. Like, it's not. You are big enough to have contracts. And let me tell you, like, when I was actively taking legal clients, one of the things that I would say is like, Name one billion dollar company that doesn't have a lawyer. Name one billion dollar company that doesn't have a legal department. Name one billion dollar company that doesn't have a team of lawyers. Name one billion dollar company that doesn't have trademarks with an S, okay? Like we are not talking about building some little bitty company that'll last for a little bit. No, we are building empires. We are building entities. I don't, I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not a solopreneur. I'm not like a little entrepreneur that's doing, I'm not a, a gigger. I'm not gigging over here. Like we are running a company and companies have legal, period. And to be honest, Y'all all got legal. Some of it is just like invisible. It's like missing. But you still have legal parameters that you have to operate within. You have to know that stuff. So number one, you got to have contracts. And you need to have contracts whether you sell into corporate or whether you sell into Corey around the street. Like, you need contracts. What happens when this stuff goes wrong? And let me tell you, you want to know what makes your contract stronger and stronger and stronger? Life experiences. I know y'all thought I was going to say the quality of your lawyer and how amazing your lawyer is and what school they went to. I went to a good school. So, hey, shout out to all y'all who went to good schools, right? But like, that's not what makes, like what happens is through your life experiences, you start to deal with situations with people and those situations start to inform what you need to ward against in black and white. Contracts have two purposes, y'all. It's not just about the term. Purpose one. Okay, what did I say? For those of you all listening to this on the podcast and you're not watching me on my on Mrs. Vibe over here, contracts have two purposes. Purpose one is to protect, right? They're supposed to help protect your interests, protect you in the event that things go wrong, make sure that you get paid on time, make sure that people know what you're going to provide to them. They're also a boundary keeper. Like they make sure that people aren't just wasting your time, wasting your life, asking for any manner of things that aren't in the agreement. But let me tell you what else a good contract will do. Honey, a good contract will inform some folks about you. You know, like ask about me, ask about me. Like your contract will inform people about you. It'll inform them to the effect that you aren't going to do any and everything just because they are a bigger company. You aren't going to allow them to push you aside and treat you any kind of way. And it also informs them to the effect of like what happens when people mess with your business. It's an information tool. There are some things that we would strategically place in contracts that we would use to really inform whoever is signing it about how we want this relationship to progress and go. So they have, there's a duality to the purpose of a contract. And pro tip, they teach us this on like the first day of law school. You can contract for anything legal under the sun. So a lot of people are like, oh, what should my contract say? It depends on the situation. Now, this is going to blow some of y'all's minds, and I'm going to help y'all out. Those of you who like to go and download contract templates and just like pay a lawyer once and never pay them again. Look, I'm not saying this because I want your money as a lawyer. Truthfully, you couldn't pay me enough to do somebody's legal work right now. I'm just not in that space. So truth of the matter is, I'm just... 
I'm just giving y'all a game to help you guys out. Every time you do a new deal with someone, that contract may need to be revised or rewritten. Like contracts are similar to, they're not even, they're more important than like your SOPs because really you want to revise your contract based on the actual deal that's before you. Okay. So they're supposed to protect obviously, and they're supposed to inform, but guess what happens if you don't enforce your contract, then your contract can no longer protect you. If you don't enforce it, it's not going to protect you. The contract itself is not a bulletproof vest. It's not going to help people's bad actions to ricochet off of you. It's only a protector if you enforce it. If you know you're not going to enforce your contract and you're going to let people breach and do whatever they want, then the contract doesn't even worth the paper that it's written on because it needs to be enforced. That's like people who get trademarks and then they never look at it again. They let anybody and everybody use their trademark. They never say anything. They're totally cool with the infringement. Like that don't make no sense. I bought it because I not only like the sheet of paper to post it on social media, but I'm also going to enforce my rights. And I don't care if you're big or small. We're going to enforce our rights. That's what we do over here. And the same way we do it, we teach our clients to set your business up in a way that you have these rights and then you protect these rights and then you enforce those rights too. If this is making sense, drop a make sense in the comments because we got some other stuff that you need to have in place because contracts are important, but they're not the be all end all. I'm going to go ahead and uh, erase, erase this board real quick. I'm going to go ahead and erase the board real quick. Okay. So we talked about contracts. Contracts were number one, the number one thing that you need. But then number two would be your IP. So you may want to have, before you sell anything to anyone, you want to think about what do I need to protect? A lot of you, if you launch different products and services and events and things like that, drop launch in the comments, drop launch in the comments. Okay. Drop launch in the comments. If you're launching stuff, if you have things going, if you're on Clubhouse and you're listening, um, send me a message that says launch in the comments because we're about to go a little bit deeper. In the room chat, you can just send me the word launch. So if you launch different products and services, one of the things that's typically missing from people when they do their, their launch planning is an IP check. An IP check. What trademarks do you need before you launch this? What should you be searching? That You should be searching the trademark database to make sure that you own it or you can own it. What domain names do you need before you start launching this product or service or speech? What do you own? And because, and why is this important? Why is this important? Because when you go out there and you're like, hey, we're the only company in the world that can bring the Currency of Confidence program to your organization. We need to make sure that by saying that, by selling that, by licensing that, we're not violating anyone else's IP because if that big company, like let's say I sell something to Google. Google is a huge company. I sell it to Google. Now, if I'm just promoting it on my own, my reach is limited to the people that are within my sphere who know about me. If I sell it to Google, they start promoting it. I license it out to them. They have higher visibility. They can then get sued for using that IP that I sold them. Who are they going to be looking to? Me? So IP is a critical piece of all this. You have to own your IP. Speedway to Cash has probably more than, I don't know, 20, 30 trademarks that have been filed for several that have been registered, more that are pending. So you want to make sure, and that's not like for clients, that's just for our own company. So I am a big fan of when me and my team are ideating, when we're thinking of our next corporate speech or launch, when we're thinking of our next launch that we're going to sell to our coaching clients, we do IP checks. We recently were thinking of a theme for Speak Your Ready Cash Live. We're going to announce it soon. Ooh, it's going to be fire. But I was like, man, okay, I love this theme. I've been saying this theme. Can we own that? We did, we did an IP check and found out someone else has already been using that. So just a side note, y'all, I got to say this. You know how like people will be like, oh, everybody's copying me, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes they're not. A lot of stuff that is trademarked is like basic stuff. It's a, it, it's English language words. So it's very possible that someone was copying you, but they really did just get the same idea. Or maybe they watch your content and they quote unquote inspired by it. And now they're repeating some of the things that you say. So to avoid that nonsense, what you do is you do an IP search before you go all in promoting a new product, a new service, a new speech, or anything that you're going to be selling to multiple people. People. The other thing that I think about with IP is like, I like to own a piece of the market. Like if y'all here speak your way to cash, think your way to cash, sell your way to cash, that's all me. Like if anyone else is using that, tell me because I own that. It is here. The Speak Your Way to Cash book is now available for you to purchase. Go to Amazon to get your audio, Kindle, or hardcover copy of the book. And we have a paperback copy, okay? So you can get it on Audible and listen to it. And I read it myself. So if you love the podcast, you will love the audiobook. 
Go get it now. Speak Your Way to Cash, how to start at the top of the speaking market instead of working your way up from the bottom. A bit about the book. It's broken down into six parts and it is over 260 pages of goodness, okay? Part one covers mindset. Part two covers getting yourself in the press. Part three covers assembling your six-figure offer. Part four covers inviting people to work with you. Ahem, sales. Part five covers delivering an outstanding speech. And part six covers legalities that every speaker needs and how to build a team. I mean, literally, what did we leave out? Nothing. So go to Amazon and grab your copy today. And let me know you did it too. So I like to own a piece of the market. I like to brand my corner of the internet. I like to brand my corner of the industry. You can't do that, y'all, if you're using other folks' IP. So one of the ways that you start to get out there and start to get some notoriety and people start to regurgitate what you're saying and repeat it and credit you for it is by branding your IP. I'm going to do a video really soon on how one of the largest consulting firms in the world grew to a billion dollar brand. And I was looking at the steps that this particular consulting firm took and they're literally some of the steps that we teach in our Speak Your Way to Cash system. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to break this down. I'm going to show everyone it's going to be great coming soon. But IP is a critical part to this whole situation. Okay. The third thing that you're going to want to have, the third thing that you're going to want to have, if this is good, drop good in the chat, drop good in the chat. Let me know. While we get into this third thing. Okay. The third thing that we want to have is frameworks. Frame works. Frame works. What is a framework? A framework is a formula for an idea or concept that you invented. A framework is a formula for an idea or concept that you invented. Now, here's why I love frameworks. This is why I love frameworks. Because, so for instance, the currency of confidence is the name of one of my signature talks. The framework, like the formula to have and use and keep the currency of confidence is the MBA method. It is mindset plus beliefs equal actions. So the right mindset form into the right beliefs and they equal confident actions. Now, here's what I love about a framework. If I went and had to give a sermon on Sunday, I would use the same framework. I'd be like, yo, I'm gonna teach you guys how to be confident Christians. What do you need? Your mindset. You gotta keep your thoughts towards God. Your beliefs, you have to believe in him with all your might and your actions have to align with his word. And then if you do all of that, you will be a confident Christian. Now, that's how I would deliver it on Sunday. But then what if I go to a girl boss brunch on Saturday and they want me to talk about the currency of confidence. I'm going to give them the same framework, but switch it up. I know ladies in here are looking to move confidently. You're looking for all your dreams to come true. The number one secret to your success is increasing in confidence. Step one, you're going to need to get your thoughts right. If you aren't thinking on a high level, you aren't acting on a high level. So start policing your thoughts. Then those thoughts cement into beliefs. Your beliefs are the springboard for every single action you take sis. So you want to make sure that if you want more confidence, you're policing your thoughts, you're evaluating your beliefs and your value systems, and you're replacing all your negative beliefs with positive ones that will equal you taking confident action. If you want to know what you believe, look at your action. But then I may be hired to go to a fortune 100 company and give the exact same talk. And you know what I'm going to say? Like you're 80% of people have negative thoughts according to data by blah, blah, blah. Those thoughts become beliefs and value systems. The number one people reason people leave corporate is because they don't believe in the values of the company and they don't see those values lived out. You want to know why your employees are sluggish, tired, and lazy all day? Well, you may consider them sluggish, tired, and lazy. They consider themselves unmotivated. A study shows that more than 50% of people go to work in the morning and they think about quitting every single day. Like, if you want to change this, you need to implement the currency of confidence. So literally, frameworks allow you to have one formula, put it in a variety of situations that have a guidebook for success. So every time I speak, I'm not creating a brand new speech. I'm not thinking about a brand new thing. I'm literally using the same framework and putting it in different situations based upon who hired me to be there. So frameworks really are powerful because they allow for you to always have an outline for your speech when starting out. It also allows you to showcase 
market dominance by owning a piece of the market. It gives you a really clear only statement. We're the only company in the world that can bring the currency of confidence program to you. How can I say that with confidence? Well, we own the trademark, we invented the formula, and you can't get it anywhere else. It's not the fact that like positive thoughts on its own is a new invention. It's the fact that the way that we've pieced it together, the research that our data scientists have done, the research that our instructional designers have done, our 60 plus question assessment that we created is based on our framework unique. And when I looked at how Boston Consulting Group grew to the billion dollar entity that it is, when I looked at how PricewaterhouseCoopers and some of the other service-based firms grew, they had framework, innovative frameworks. Now, if you were to parse out the framework itself, it wasn't that they invented positive thinking. It wasn't that they invented working in a new way. It was that the way that they packaged and positioned themselves in the marketplace allowed them to do something different. It allowed them to do something different. And so if you're out here and you're sounding like everyone else, you're acting like everyone else, your, your market messaging, it mirrors everyone else's, you want to look at your framework. You want to look at your framework. You want to look at your IP and you want to have contracts every single time you do business with an organization. Every single time you do business with an organization. So it's critically important. It's critically important. And then you take all of this, you take this framework, and then when you start to sell to organizations, you sell the framework, not you. Why is that? Why would I want to sell the framework and not just me? Well, because when you sell the framework, you can disappear out of the equation and you still get your money. What does that look like? That looks like a company saying, hey, we don't have your full budget. We only have 5K and I can send a team member to deliver the talk because they're going to deliver it based on the framework that I sold the client. So one of the things that I would say to you all is like, you want to make sure that you're, you got to make sure you're selling the right thing. Selling you only takes you so far. Another commonality that I realized, and I really want to do a whole video on this because it's going to be like, it's going to be so epic. But another commonality that I realized amongst these companies that are the largest in the world for selling services, one, they have large clients, so you can't get out of it. You got to have some large clients. But two, they sold frameworks. They sold ideas that people could get behind. What is the, the vision of TED, the TED organization, TED? An idea worth spreading. It is imperative that our companies start to sell the big idea versus just the service. Oh, I sell a contract. Y'all want to know how our law firm became a multi six figure law firm fast, like within a year? It wasn't the way that I slung. It wasn't like, oh, she drafts contracts. They're so dope. It was the idea behind working with our company. I wouldn't sell the contract on its own. I would sell the fact that we work with visionaries. I would sell the fact that it's imperative that you have a lawyer that sees into your vision, that doesn't treat you small, that doesn't treat you for the size you have, but treats you for where you're going. It's imperative that you work with a company that loves to see around corners, that loves to peer into the future. Some of you have services that are so incredible, that are so amazing, but your mistake is that you're selling the service instead of the vision. Is it you? Is it, are you the one? Are you selling the, are you selling the little widget? Instead of the vision behind it, there are other lawyers out there. There are other speakers out there. There are other speaking coaches out there. But when you work with our company, we are always seeking to peer into our clients' future, period. Sometimes I tell my clients, I ain't even talking to you right now. I'm talking to the future version of you that's inside of you. I don't even care if you get this today. You're going to look back at this three years from now and be like, Ashley told me that. I am looking to awaken something inside of my client that they don't even know is there. That is the exact thing that's going to propel them to the next level. So you don't make the mistake of selling the thing. Sell the vision. Sell the vision. Sell the vision. Because when you sell the thing, when you make it like, oh, I do a contract, come to my firm, we, we write contracts. That's boring, number one. But number two is like, okay, well, if you sell contracts and she sells contracts, what happens? You commoditize yourself and they're comparing on price. When you're selling the framework, the vision, the, the ability to see beyond what's on the paper, then they're not just comparing you based on price. They're looking at you and looking at other people and realizing, man, ain't nobody like that girl. Ain't nobody like that guy. Here's another thing. Here's another thing I want to tell y'all. I got to tell you guys this, and I hope y'all don't mind. Like, let me erase this. I don't want you guys to miss this next point. I do not want y'all to miss this next point because this is, this is pretty urgent. This is pretty urgent. If you're going to start selling the vision, drop vision in the comments, number one. Let's just see who's committed to this. But this is pretty urgent, y'all. I have to tell you guys this. It is highly probable 
that you don't see how big you are right now. It is like, for most of you watching, it is like 80% likely that you don't see how big you are right now. And I don't know why it is, but there's something that we do. And if you do this too, if you do this too, then just drop me too in the chat. But one of the things that I used to do is I would, I had a VA that was pitching some press for me. And I was like, oh, you know, thank you so much for pitching this press. These are the podcasts I want you to pitch to. She ended up pitching me for like some humongous podcasts. And like, I'm talking about millions of reviews, well, millions of followers, thousands of reviews, really big shows. And I, when she first started doing it, this was a while ago, but I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I was embarrassed. I was like, oh my gosh, why would you pitch me for that? Like, I don't have millions of followers, like blah, 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 excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. Do you know that because she she saw me in line with the opportunities that she was pitching me for and she was worried about pitching me for stuff that was too small. So for her, it was like, I have to pitch you for these large opportunities because otherwise I'm gonna pitch you for shows that are way too small for you. So I was like, man, that's dope. You know what started to happen? We started to land a lot of those podcasts. We landed a lot of those features. And what that showed me is I am missing opportunities, not because I'm not qualified for it, not because I'm not good enough for it, not because I don't have my contracts and my IP and my frameworks, but because I didn't see myself large enough for the stages that were ready for me. Let me repeat that. I didn't see myself as big enough for the stages that were waiting and ready for me. I want you to consider how many opportunities aren't you enjoying right now because you don't think you're ready. Now, I told you guys what you need to have when selling the corporate. I told you guys some things that you need to do, but now I want to talk to you about why you can't wait. Let me talk to you about why you cannot wait because there are some of you that are like, I'm going to just wait until I have all my stuff together. I want to wait until I have all my stuff in order. I want to wait until I have everything that I need. The truth of the matter is for many of you, you are ready now. You should not be waiting. You need to do what it takes to get in the game now, prepare as best as you humanly can right now, and go for gold. If you don't start pitching yourself for larger stages, pitching yourself for larger opportunities, pitching yourself for larger press, learning how to sell your services, learning how to position your frameworks, learning how to position yourself for greatness, great opportunities are going to pass you by or you're not going to get them until you think you're ready. And by that time, you would have been beyond the opportunities that you pitch for. So the reason why we're hosting the Pitch Your Way to Cash Challenge is to show you how to pitch for large opportunities, how to pitch for bigger stages, how to get on the the radar of your ideal dream wealthy client and how to make sure that you are never tied to one client because let me tell y'all the truth this is something i'll be telling y'all i love our incredible corporate clients i think they're great shout out to y'all because i know some of y'all are watching this right now but the truth of the matter is janky does not have a business size okay so what that means is you don't want to be tied to any one type of client. If your entire business is based on you having one client and that client controls whether you feast or famine for a season, that's not good. You need a diversified client list so that when the time comes that you need to release a client to their destiny, you are financially in a position to do it. And 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 grand does not make you compromise your integrity, compromise your contracts, bend over backwards when you said you weren't going to. The biggest reason why I became an entrepreneur is because I never wanted to be in a position where one entity, traditionally run by people who do not look like me, was in control of my entire destiny. I abhorred that feeling, hated it. I hated that I went to work. And if I did not please people who did not look like me, I couldn't get a raise. Like, I hated that feeling. And so for y'all, the reason why we're having the Pitch Your Way to Cash Challenge, and you can go to www.pitchyourwaytocash.com, is because I don't want you to ever be in that position. And I'll be honest with you guys, based on some stuff that's happened just this week, I was uh, talking to a friend of mine and I was like, should I even be teaching my people how to sell to organizations that historically have not been equitable to us? And she was like, you got to do it because honestly, there's other people that teach it that don't look like you and they don't talk about the biases and the strategies that we need to know because it's going to be different for us. And so in all transparency, your freedom is in your ability to create opportunity, financial opportunity for yourself. People talk about financial freedom, but one of the ways you get financial freedom is not being tied to anyone else's finances. What does that mean? There is not a single client that I work with that can force me to do something that I am not integrally aligned with 
if that's even a word, I don't know. But like, but I'm not aligned with because they pay me, not one. So you want to be diversified enough so that you have real freedom, freedom to say no to money, freedom to say, I don't believe that's aligned with me. That's not how we operate here. That's against our policies. That is the type of freedom that I want us to have. And I do believe that having some large clients is great, but I also believe knowing how to diversify your revenue streams from different sources is great too. And so when you join the Pitch Your Way to Cash Challenge, these are not strategies that you can only use to sell to corporations or colleges or associations or nonprofits. These are strategies that you can use to get more coaching clients. These are strategies that you can use to land more press. These are strategies that you can use to sell more services holistically. So you should join if you want to sell more services. But let me tell y'all something. Your entire mission, hear me now, your entire mission on this earth as a business owner is to find your people. Find your people. Literally, there are like 7 billion plus people on the planet. My goal every day that I wake up as in my right mind with all the activities of my limbs is to go out into this world of 7 billion on this internet of billions and find the people that I'm supposed to coach because those are the people that I'm supposed to help to change the world. We're going to change the world together. That's what me, me and my clients, we change the world together. And so I am always encouraged and motivated to find my people. That requires marketing. That requires sales. That requires requires pitching that requires me telling y'all who I am and who I'm not okay because who you are is going to attract you some people but who you are combined with who you ain't is going to attract the right people okay play your games not me so like that like literally you want to find your people and pitching allows you to choose who your people are because so often when you put yourself out there and you mass market you're going to attract a flood of people so many incredible people will be attracted to you. But here's the thing. Here's the key. Many of them may not be ready to invest. Many of them may not be your ideal avatar. Many of them may not be good fits for whatever reason. So your job is to tell people who you are, tell them who you're not, find your people, find your people and pitching will help you to do just that. Okay. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. If you have not already go to pitchyourwaytocash.com. Let me show you guys the website really quickly for those of you for those of you listening on the podcast shout out to you all i really love our podcast fam please leave us a review and hopefully you learned something if you learned at least one thing from watching this drop a one in the chat drop a one in the chat or let me know in the reviews if you learned at least one thing something that made you say huh i need to switch it up then drop a one in the chat and then here's where you're gonna go you're gonna go to pitch your way to cash.com and apply to join the pitch your way to cash challenge when you apply to join this challenge let me tell you what happens you will be taken to a one-page application. You'll get an instant decision, an instant decision. Oh, let me see if this works. Then you'll be taken to this page, which is where you can select your ticket. So as you can see, we have three ticket types. One is a general access pass. What I want y'all to do on here right now is go to the all access pass and get the platinum all access pass let me tell you why three reasons one you get to come to a private q a with me our vip day started 25k so this private q a gold two you get my most profitable pitches directly in your membership portal three you actually get a membership portal with advanced trainings in it okay and you get the replays of the challenge that's a bonus one so get the all access pass like 300 bucks is nothing for your future like it's worth so much more than that we had someone take this challenge and land a 7k a month reoccurring contract so i mean this price is literally just telling us who's invested in and who's who's not invested yet. You know what I'm saying? So like, it, it's not based, it's not price based on the value. That is just who's invested and who's not. So I want you to go and get an all access pass, invest in your future. You will get immediate access to a portal that will give you access to some advanced trainings that you can take part in literally tonight. And you will get to attend via a private Zoom link versus just attending via the Facebook group. If you get a free pass, let me tell you what you don't get. With the free pass, you are not able to see any replays. You can attend via the private Facebook group. You have to attend live in the Facebook group. You don't get to join via the VIP Zoom link. So I highly recommend you get the Platinum All Access Pass today and start watching those trainings that are in there right now. Just go to pitchyourwaytocash.com to get your ticket for that, okay? So hopefully you guys got some value out of this. I'm seeing your comments. Thank you so much, Kat, for I always learn a lot. I appreciate it. If you guys have any questions about the challenge, drop them in the chat. I'll make sure one of my team members gets back to you guys right away. I'm excited about what we're going to be doing starting on Monday. 
we are getting ready for this. Like, I'm so stoked about it. It's about to go down. It's going to be a whole, a whole vibe, a whole situation. So make sure you're there. We do not want you to miss this incredible, incredible, incredible challenge. It literally has changed lives already. Don't believe me? Join the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group, search the word challenge, and you will see some of the testimonials in real time of lives that have been changed and transformed through the Speak Your Way to Cash system and the challenge specifically. All right, I'll see y'all there. All right, wasn't that interview amazing? If you're anything like me, you have pages full of notes. But here's the thing. Before you head out, I want you to go to Facebook.com and join the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group. That is where I am. That's where a ton of other speakers are, a ton of other people who listen to the show. All We all congregate there and chat. And it's 100% free. Now, if you're ready to take your speaking career to the next level, I have two ways for you to do that. One, you can go to AshleyNicoleKirkwood.com slash SYWTC live replay and pick up the live replay. That training is seven modules, chock full of information. It's crazy. Go over there, read all about it. Or if you want a more personal experience, you're already, you already know that you want to be a speaker. You're ready to fully commit and you want someone to walk you through it and save you tons of time Googling and doing it on your own, then book a VIP day with me. You can go to AshleyNicoleKirkwood.com, scroll down until you see the VIP day section and get more information on that there. All right. Thank you guys again for watching. Please do not forget to leave us a review. That is how we keep this train rolling and get some of the best speakers in the world to get on this show. So please, please, please leave a review. Shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram and Facebook in the Speaker Way to Cash group, Instagram at, at the Ashley Nicole Show. And I'd be more than happy to chat with you and say hi. All right, y'all have an awesome, awesome day.